Ah, uh, there, there it's adjusted. Hey, look at this, this, this is my new studio space and we're just moving in right now, which is why it looks kind of barren and not the most exciting thing in the world. Plus I miss my wood wall, don't worry. We might get a new one, but I'm here because I need to tell you about a couple things. One, we have that cool Maleficent horn model available and I'm gonna tell you how to get it. And two, we need to talk about this machine and what's printing on it right now and I'm really excited and I'm gonna show you right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, welcome back. Look, here's the model. This is the Maleficent Horns, and this was modeled by Garrett and Chelsea over at Chaos Cortex, and they did a fantastic job. I love this, and I've heard from a lot of people who love it as well and say, Joel, how can I get that model? I want to print it myself. So, as of today, right now, we're making this model available for free globally. Anyone in the world is more than welcome to print this model, and you're going to find a link to it down in the description. Gotta make you a deal though. If you do choose to print this out, I do wanna see it, so tag me on the socials. I'm at Joel Telling on the Twitters, and I'm at Joel Telling on the Instagrams. You know, before I forget, you should also probably tag Garrett and Chelsea. It's their model. I think they would appreciate seeing your wonderful handiwork and recreating this in the physical world. Some people did ask if it would fit on my head, and I have a large head. This fits Shannon's head, it fits Sean's head, it fits David's head, it fits my wife's head, it fits my kids' heads. Does it fit on my head? <laughs> no. Enough about this model, let's put this away because I have shells to hold things. What we need to do is talk about this machine too, because that episode, the Maleficent Horns episode, introduced 3D printing to a myriad of people who are not a part of the community or hadn't actually used, seen, touched 3D printing before. They had questions about this machine, and while I reviewed the N2+, Plus, I think it's only fair that we dive into this one as well. So as an overview, and just to kind of hit some things on a high level, this machine has an incredibly large build volume. It also has dual extrusion, thanks to those two nozzles you see on the print head right there. It has the ability to do remote printing and monitoring via Wi-Fi. You've also got a removable build plate, and this touchscreen up front is seven inches of goodness. So first thing, I do want to dive into the build volume of this machine. It's 305 on the X and on the Y, and on the Z, it's 605. That means it's 12 inches across, it's 12 inches deep, and it's almost 24 inches tall. That is incredibly large and great for full-size things. Not just Thanos' sword like we did before, but Maleficent's horns and helmet, plus that Mandalorian helmet right there from Nico Industries. I reviewed the Raze 3D N2 Plus before, and it has dual extrusion thanks to nozzles that are side by side. That means it can interrupt a print because the inactive nozzle can knock into things. Raze 3D actually upgraded the Pro 2 Plus, and what's great is that secondary nozzle right there is on a motor and will electronically lift out of the way when not in use. That's pretty cool. The N2 Plus had a 7-inch touchscreen up front, just like this machine, so I'm really glad that Rays decided to bring it over to the Pro 2 Plus. And just like before, it'll allow you to change temperatures, change settings connected to Wi-Fi, and you can wear gloves while you use it. That's handy. Handy! It's handy! Did you get it? <clears throat> Hashtag dad joke. They've got a camera on board here, which lets you remotely manage and, and watch your prints. And it's great because when you're traveling and you want to check in for peace of mind, this allows you to do it. In fact, when we were traveling through Europe recently, I had this print going at home and I was able to, using my phone, check in on the print and watch it, which, like I said, gave me great peace of mind. Plus, if anything went wrong with Joel here, what I could have done remotely on my phone is pause the print or stop the print. And then my wife who was home could have cleaned it up and got the machine ready to start again. I didn't have to do that. And I just watched it build over time. And when we got home, this was waiting for me. In fact, uh, we talk about this in a video with Sophie Wong. You should check it out. It's in the description. This machine is fully enclosed. It has doors that close and it has this giant top you can put on top of the machine. 
That isn't needed for PLA. In fact, what we're printing right now is PLA, and that's why the top is off and the door can be open, not just because it's not needed, but because I want you to be able to see it. It's awesome. But when you're printing other materials, engineering grade materials, or materials that require the chamber to be actually consistently a little bit warmer than ambient temperature, that's when that lid comes in handy. In fact, we have this we have this really cool project coming up and we're going to be using Tallman Alloy 910. And what's great is Ray's 3D provides the slicer settings for that and many other filaments from their open filament program. And they're free. You just go to the website and download it. But here's where you come in. I'd love to hear your guesses as to what we're printing with Tallman Alloy 910. He recently posted a picture of some spikes in Alloy 910 going through wood. He was pounding the spikes into the wood. We're not doing that, we're doing something else, and I'd love to hear your guesses. Unlike the N2 Plus, this build plate is held in place, super secure, and it's removable. I can't show you that right now because that helmet is still printing, but Sean and I, we have to go out of town for a few days. Don't worry, I can remotely monitor this print, and when we get back, we should have an incredibly glorious, wonderful Mandalorian helmet ready for us. We'll be able to take the build plate out and get the print cleaned up. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna let this print. I'm gonna monitor it from the road and we'll see you in a few days. Day four. Hey, we're back. We are back and look at this. Look at this print. It is done. Sean and I are back from our little road trip and it was really awesome being able to monitor this thing on the road. I was checking in on my phone, really anxious to see it finished. And once it was finished, I was like, yes. And I showed everyone it was awesome. And here it is finally done 69 hours later. And uh, we got a little time-lapse ready to view there. This is amazing. Nico Industries modeled a wonderful Mandalorian helmet. We printed it on the Pro 2 Plus. I think our next step though, is to remove the build plate and get that off the build plate and see if it fits on my huge head. Fingers crossed. Let's do it. Look at this, look, just, just look at it. We are done. This is a full-sized Mandalorian helmet, 3D printed on the Pro 2 Plus, and it looks extraordinary. Also, you may have noticed we used no center supports, none whatsoever. What's great about this technique in printing helmets on 3D printers is that it uses far, far less material. The machine can probably handle more than you're throwing at it, and in fact, this proves it. Look at that, there are no supports in there, in the center, none whatsoever. It was around the perimeter, which means that not only did we use less material, it took less time, and the result was still awesome. And the model, none of it was touching the build plate. We used a raft, uh, I like to consider it as insurance for the print. We used a raft and then the entire perimeter of this model was sitting on support structures that the machine generated. So it printed just like this. And that's why we still see some dense support layers that didn't break off. Uh, I do have needle nose pliers and uh, Frank from Thingergy gave me a tip where he said a curved X-Acto is great to get those off as well. The big test now, the big test, and literally it's a big test, is to see whether it fits on my big head. Hey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Does it look okay? It looks big. Okay, it looks big. But that's the problem, right? I have a big head. How could it not look big? That's fair. I am excited. The Pro 2 Plus delivered an amazing result. Nico Industries modeled up an amazing model. And now I have something that I can't wait to finish 
and where when The Mandalorian premieres on Disney Plus. God, this is an exciting time to be alive. Yeah, good. Well, there we go. Obviously, links to everything that you saw in this episode are gonna be down in the description. And if you watched this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all, as always. High five.